It's been a few years since I first made the Introduction to the Big Bang video, and I hope the large majority of those who have viewed this video found it to be educational. However, I received a lot of commentary over the years that I found to be a bit worrying. I originally made this video to present people with a simple to understand explanation of the basic tenets of the Big Bang Theory. However, as I should have guessed, many people seem to think that the Big Bang violates several conservation laws in physics, and I guess my lack of explanation as to what went on during the Planck era means that cosmologists don't have any ideas as to what occurred during this time, or so people think. This has led some people to conclude that the Big Bang Theory is somehow flawed, or that the evidence somehow doesn't support it. Despite how some of these comments have been presented, I'm going to assume that they are all sincere in their questioning. I also will assume that a lot of these comments are coming from those with a very limited understanding of physics. Perhaps a quick glance at a Wikipedia article is the only brush many commentators have had with the laws of thermodynamics or quantum mechanics. But regardless, they need addressing. And I want to address this all in full. So with the hope that this will clarify some of the questions that I've been asked over the years about my video, I now present to you an introduction to the Big Bang Theory and addendum. As many of the objections to the Big Bang revolve around the laws of thermodynamics in some way, shape, or form, I think these claims would be a good place to start. First, a bit of background about the laws of thermodynamics themselves. Thermodynamics is a study of energy transfer, specifically heat energy. This is apparent in the word thermodynamics itself, thermo referring to heat, and dynamics referring to power, which is related to energy. The study of thermodynamics is what allows us to have all sorts of modern conveniences, for instance, without thermodynamics, car engines and refrigerators wouldn't be possible at all. Out of thermodynamics come four laws that physicists have found application for in almost every imaginable situation, from car engines to black holes in deep space. These four laws, however, have been subject to wide public misunderstanding, and unfortunately have been misapplied by many people in flawed attempts to disprove basic scientific tenets like evolution or the Big Bang Theory. So where exactly do so many people go wrong? Well, let's examine a very simple claim to start out with, that evolution violates the second law of thermodynamics. It is claimed that the second law says things tend to get more disordered with time, but that evolution state that things get more ordered and this is a violation of the second law. So where's the flaw? It is of course in the assumption that the second law states that everything tends towards disorder no matter what. This is true in a closed system, that is, one that doesn't provide outside energy, or doesn't receive outside energy, rather, for fueling organization. However, the sun provides an incredible influx of energy every second of every single day. This energy can be utilized by chemicals and biological organisms to fuel organization. Think about it this way. If the second law is applicable in any situation, regardless of the nature of the system itself, no amount of work would ever lead to organization because things would supposedly just become more disordered no matter what. Ice would melt into a less organized puddle of water, regardless of whether or not it was in a freezer or on the ground at room temperature. While the universe as a whole may be becoming more disordered, life on Earth, due to energy transfer from the sun, is certainly not. Before I continue further, let us get some terminology out of the way. I used disorder and order as a way of describing states that matter could be in. But this is more qualitative and not really quantitative. Physicists like quantitative, though, and describe disorder and order in terms of what is called entropy. There are many different ways to define entropy, depending on what we are trying to explain, though the usual explanation takes advantage of things called microstates, which are just the number of possible states a given system can be in. However, to keep this simple enough, let's just stick with thinking measure of disorder when we refer to entropy, and only use microstates when we need to. To get back on track, then, let's take a look at the common claim against the Big Bang using the second law of thermodynamics. The gist is this. The Big Bang is a disorganizing explosion, but things are ordered now. Explosions don't create order, therefore the Big Bang is wrong. Well, the first problem is this, besides the fact that the Big Bang is not an explosion. And I explain this in my video, but some people don't seem to notice this. Uh, it doesn't take into account the initial entropy. This claim does not take into account the entropy prior to the actual expansion of the universe in the Big Bang. In fact, scientists have calculated and measured this initial entropy to be almost as small as it possibly could be, nearly zero entropy. This is necessary for a universe to have formed like it did. With the initial entropy our universe did have, the organization of stars, galaxies, and everything else is trivial. 
Entropy did increase after the expansion, but the assumption is that things were initially more disorganized than they are now, and that's an incorrect assumption. Entropy was lower prior to the expansion of the universe than it was afterwards. So this is all well and good, things are the way they are, but is there a reason why this entropy started out so low? It seems kind of, well, just nice for the physicists to have this low entropy system expanding into a greater entropy system, and while we know that's how things are, is there a reason as to why they are the way they are? And I'll try to explain this low entropy initial state in the third part of this video series, I'm going to have to split this up, and this, this is going to be talking about quantum gravity and its applications to cosmology. For now, we're just going to have to accept that, well, these are the facts, that we started off in a low entropy system, and move on to the other claim about the Big Bang regarding the law of thermodynamics, this time the first law of thermodynamics. As the Big Bang eventually gives rise to matter at some point during the evolution of our universe, when there was no matter before, most people object to this notion of matter just being created out of nothing, as if it were a violation of the first law of thermodynamics. In fact, it happens around us every day in the form of vacuum fluctuations, which we have experimentally verified to be true in something known as the Casimir effect. In fact, a quick glance at E equals mc squared shows us that in a universe's current state, given enough energy in a system, mass, and therefore matter, can indeed form out of nothing. Granted, certain symmetries aren't violated, and I'll get into the symmetry violation in the third part of the video. So what does the first law tell us? That energy is conserved, not matter. Matter is destroyed and created all of the time in nuclear reactors. If you take a particle and collide it with its antiparticle, this destroys both of the original particles. But the energy from the collision is conserved. Not the mass or the matter, but the energy as a whole is conserved. It's transformed into dif different types of energy. The Big Bang Theory makes no claims about energy appearing out of nowhere, and thus doesn't violate the first law. Of course, the origin of matter is not as simple as I made it out to be. And again, I will explain this in a later video, as it's a very large topic that takes up a lot of time on its own. I think the thing to remember about this is to remember the applicability of these laws. Like any law, they can't just be blindly applied to any situation. The situation itself must first be understood, and so must the laws themselves, before one goes around claiming that very basic scientific theories that have been tested by thousands upon thousands of very great scientific minds are wrong because all the scientists just forgot to check something very simple like the first or second law of thermodynamics. In fact, it is clear that the Big Bang violates neither the first nor the second law, and that experimental evidence continues to verify this every single day.